Good evening and welcome to the DCS MB339 fail flight. Now, I've been flying this... Well, when it was a mod, I actually used to fly this with some regularity. Because my co-squadron commander hosted a campaign called Freedom Inc. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you will surely be familiar with it, since our current campaign is actually based on the same mercenary concept. But the first one was basically just the MB339 and the L39, and basically not much more than that. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, at that time I didn't actually enjoy it. Rather, I f seem to have called it the flying piano. Um, let's see, nose wheel steering. Uh, I thought I had that set up, but I did not. Ah, there we go. You even have a nice little button there that will tell you if the steering is on or not. And the rudder the pedals will work just fine for that so so they, they basically decided to take what was a free modification and honestly one of the best modifications to exist in dcs uh, aside from the a4 obviously and uh, they just rolled with it and decided that hey we're gonna make this into a module and I'm very happy that they did it, because... Well, the flying piano has kind of won me over. And uh, I'm always happy for others to see the light, as it were. Now, I should also mention that the first this is really my first flight. I've only set up some of the controls. But I haven't actually flown it, but I'm counting on previous experience to be... Uh, to be of help here. Uh, I should also mention that I'm flying this com not with completely without cargo because I have the fuel tanks on the wing tips there. But I plan to make some maneuvers without weapons. And when I feel comfortable flying the plane, I'll add some weapons into the mix. At least she taxis well. I have absolutely no concerns with how the airplane taxis. Uh, seems to work pretty well. The map is a rather unit intense one. It is the fail flight map I created for my squadron that essentially is all about uh, training. So, ground targets and stuff like that are already present. And this is not really the way to take off on this particular runway, but we're the only ones here, so I can't really see how it's going to be any issues. Now, I must say that I do enjoy the ground break. The ground break is pretty much instant. I don't know if it's tuned too heavy, uh, but I've never s I've seen few planes that will just break on a dime like uh, this plane does. However, I'm fairly certain I can't use it to actually break after having landed, because I'll either top the plane over or some other horrible event is gonna happen. Uh, I don't think I... Oh, it looks like we have some uh, icing on the cake here. And it might be that we actually need to put uh, cockpit heat online. So, w cabin temperature, we're gonna tune it up because it's a little bit cold outside. And we'll see if that helps. It could be me that it's just seems to be clearing up a bit. Uh, 
And let's see where we get. We should have the flaps right there. Uh, but I I'll, I'll think I'll just rather just bind it and make sure that uh, that we got that. Yeah, flaps up will be on the throttle, obviously, and flaps down will also be on the throttle. So flaps down, we will disengage the steering. And we will increase the full thrust and She's a very stable aircraft on the ground as well. I sometimes have problem with aircraft sliding hither and thither on the runway. So far the MB339 has not subjected me to any of that. Like I said, first time I flew this plane, uh, Rover was encouraged to fly it by my co-squadron commander Airfix. Uh, I didn't like it. I called it the flying piano. And I don't really know if I suggested it to him or if he did so out of his own mind. But we, in that mercenary campaign, we had pretty individual aircraft. And what he did was that he painted the wings of my aircraft with invasion stripes. So basically the wings on that plane would be turned into what was most literally a flying piano. And I've ke despite, the na despite the fact that the nickname came because I felt it flew like a piano, you know, the entire f shtick about dropping a piano uh, on top of someone from a building or something like that. Uh, that was basically how I felt about it, but I don't feel uh, that way about it now. And sorry, I need to... Uh, I need to fix the trim. Uh, I sh really should have done all that, all this um, before, but now you'll simply have to see that a lot of the key binds are missing, and I do not think this is a bad thing, because I find it more annoying when the keybinds are set and you accidentally do something, rather than when they're not set, and you just realize that, oh, nothing is happening, I can bind this shit however I please. We have the new 2.8 weather active, but uh, so far I'm not seeing much of a difference. I did update the template. There should be the... I put the ice halo on automatic because I didn't want... Yeah, I think we see we can see the edge of an ice halo right there, I think. Uh, because we have good conditions for an ice halo and yeah... Ooh... Looking straight into the sun, kids, is not a good idea. So far, I am enjoying how enjoying how this place plane is handling. Among the weapons alternatives, you will find lots of different guns, rockets, stuff like that that we'll try out later. But one thing I actually would like is actually heat-seeking missiles. I would love for this bird to have sidewinders or something like that. And I don't really care if they have if they have flown with them in in real life like that or not. I just want them because that would be really interesting for the campaign ideas I have. But of course that can be done with guns as well. I mean the campaign ID I have for this airplane will be something along the line of the 339 versus the L39. And uh, it will. Any jet versus jet combat will be between trainers. There will be no qualified aircraft in that campaign. 
this is a bit different because initially I had planned on the MB339 to be part of the upcoming Mirage F1 campaign, but then I realized that the people who made the F1 Ergis, they've actually made. Let's see here. Uh, we have a math caution, so we should probably be a bit more careful here. Uh, they also made a trainer called the C101, and to be perfectly blunt, if I'm making a, pl a campaign about the Mirage F1 and I intend to have light attack aircraft or uh, counterinsurgency aircraft as they will be used in that campaign, then I might as well just pair them up. And this is actually not a bad thing because it means that I have a lot more liberty when it comes to designing the MB339's uh, campaign from the ground up. So we are going to set move in. We are gonna try and put this bird down. And <laughs> on the mod, this was usually one of the more fun aspects of flying the aircraft. Because, as I remember it, this airplane has a absolutely hideous um, stopping. So, we're just going to adjust here. We're going to search. Uh, we're going to search for the air brakes. And... Uh, oh, never mind. It doesn't seem to be any... I'm actually going to check that again. Because... Air brake... No. There's, there's not. Uh, that's a little bit sad because I do like to have my air brakes on a flip. So if I flip it, if I flip the button forward or backwards, whatever, I can see on my throttle button what mode the air brake is going to be in. Uh, that is very much the case with my flaps. Uh, I bind it to my flaps for that very uh, very reason and we're gonna move her down set her down see if we survive the landing if we do we are going to uh, put some rockets on this thing and see if we can use the weapons to some degree we might even stray into armed enemy territory and see how we will fare against the lighter anti-aircraft guns there. I have to say that the lighting on this level right now is actually really nice, but it's also early in the morning, so we're gonna line ourselves up with the runway. Now, I should warn you that I'm not the most competent flyer in our squadron, nor am I mm, the most methodical. Rather, I tend to be a bit of a klutz, especially in terms of landing. So, apologies for what you're about to see. Uh, you want to get out? Now, now would be a good time. Landing gear? Ooh, I like that. Both the sound effect and the feeling in the aircraft when you extend the landing gear is pretty nice. And my approach looks far better from the cockpit than it does from the uh, from the outside view. Now obviously I have made sure to reduce the throttle because I do want a slow approach. Air brakes out. Reducing the throttle even more. I think that the key to braking while landing is going to be doing so in short bursts. So I don't blow the tires and I don't blow anything else. Of course, I've already seems to have damaged one of the landing gear. 
And to be honest, for my first landing, it's good to know that that can happen. Uh, I wonder if that's going to affect my ability to retract it. And to be perfectly honest, it most likely will. So we're not going to tax off the runway. Rather, we are just going to... Uh, yeah. So the shortcut command to just open the canopy works just fine. No need to lock it or anything. So we are going to load... I think we're going to load a mixed bag of rockets here. Uh, the master rocket pod. And... Uh, some hydras. Basically, we're going to mix it up with... Uh, the, dif the different ones that are available. I actually think we uh, might actually switch the scheme as well to... I don't. I didn't even know the Ghana had an air force. I don't barely know what the Ghana is. So uh, we're also going to remove the. Oh, that apparently I couldn't do that. So we're not going to do it. Request rearming. So this is the Ghana air force skin. That actually looks pretty neat. Pretty aggressive. Since I. Might actually put the campaign on the Persian Gulf. This skin is an actually a top contender to to be used in that campaign. Now, obviously, I should obviously have put some gun pods on, but I I think I'll just satisfy myself with with uh, doing a couple of rocket runs, and then yeah, we'll complete. then we'll be done with it. So, air break is... I wonder if we need this entire runway. Most likely we do. So, we're just going to... Rearming was... Not a... Non-problematic. But we are gonna have a much heavier aircraft now. And we also have... The damages to the landing gear, obviously, which is probably going to be a big fucking mess going forward. Slowing it down a bit, and we'll just taxi to the end of the runway. And now would be a good time to reacquaint myself with actually how to use the weapons. Um, okay, so basically the same thing. You pick your you pick your hard point. You sick. You pick everything else, and we are going way too fast. We don't want to run off the runway because then someone will clip it, and then we'll never hear the end of it. You know how it is. So basically you select the hard points like this, meaning you can actually select just a couple of them if you want. Ooh, listen to that. So basically it seems like you can fire more than... Like if you want to fire free on the same side you can do so, but if you do so you're probably some kind of maniac. Alright, so steering is reactivated for this turn. We're lining ourselves up. Throttling back. So we have the bomb fuse. We have select jetson. Select jetson will most likely work the same way. Like if we pick the outer ones, we are going to jetson it. Master arm also works the same way as you would expect, so no surprise there. Actually, I'm really happy about the simplicity of this weapons panel. It's bare bones. Uh, we're just gonna check, so yeah, as expected. Uh, so fire gun and fire weapons. I'm ju just gonna check, because most likely release is going to be... Huh. Weapons... No, actually, the, the... This I also like, because 
Uh, I'm just going to switch, turn this on the throttle, so we have a master arm toggle switch. Uh, I like this. Like, fire, firing your guns is one button, and firing your weapons is going to be the second button. It doesn't need to be, like, five different options. I appreciate the fact that there are five different options in other models. Well, that's an... It's, a, it's an exaggeration, obviously. But, for me, I prefer to just, you know, have guns on the trigger and everything else on the... on button 2. Uh, and... I, I do that because I like to have... I like to be able to fire, fire my guns while I have weapons selected. Because guns are usually the kind of situation you want to do... Let's see if that damaged wheel is gonna... No, we are gonna... Oh, we damaged the front wheel as well. <laughs> this is truly a fail flight, my friends! Because we just took off with some heavy cargo and we have two damaged landing gear. Oh, dear. I am not sure I have actually managed to find any decent... Uh, any decent um, way to fix the cabin tent? Let's see here. Oh, there's the de there's the the mess. So right next to the cabin um, to the cabin temperature temperature that we actually turned up quite a bit. We have the canopy de mist, and I don't know how I missed that the first time around. But I honestly enjoy how easy it is to just jump back into this plane. I didn't really fee I didn't think I would be able to just jump back into it and well honestly that this little landing gear is basically telling me No, don't you dare say that you know this plane. Don't you dare But I'm I'm going to anyway. And of course I need to fix the flaps. Honestly, that that ha that halo over there is pretty nice, but obviously it also looks a bit out of place with a Ghana Air Force MB339 in this winter landscape. So let's keep it going. I don't know if I'm going to actually try and find some targets for us, or if I'm just going to unload the rockets on something. We're, we can actually check... Ooh, that's nice! New call sign. So the F-10 map has also seen a little bit of an upgrade there. So you can see... The, the, you can see what, pe what call signs they have. Of course, that's a little bit annoying too, but... So we have a number of submarines and ships around Batumi. And, but Batumi is also the closest one, so we might as well try that. And uh, we also have the target group of Sukhois, and we also have the uh, drone aircraft and tanks. But the problem with these tanks is that they are really, really hard to spot. So, uh, actually, I think I'm just going to head north. Because otherwise we're just going to eat the stinger. So, basically, we can, we can actually try the rockets right now. And master arm button binding works fine. Uh, inner stations are selected. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is that I am going to unload the rockets now, then I'm going to land, then I'm gonna take another aircraft, and then I'm going to try and attack the defended target that is Batumi. And in that case, I'm going to use gun pods and bombs. So I'm going to designate a target, which is going to be the Basically, the k f smaller clearing ahead of me, and we are just gonna roll in there and see if we can... It really is that simple. 
It really is that simple. Select your pylons, master arm on, and then just go ham with your rockets. And it'll even tell you when you're empty. So that's that's nice. So you can easily have a look on that panel. You can just uh, let's see here sequence. I wonder if this means we are gonna fire a stream of rockets. Let's op let's aim for that open field. Let's not hit any civilian targets. We're not Russians after all. Yeah. So basically, if you're firing in a sequence then that will be a burst. So now we only have the outer ones left. And we have another... We have another field up ahead. That co-pilot is still staying with us. I don't really know why he's doing that. I wouldn't do so. Yeah. I'm thinking about actually landing on the road, but I think there's too many lamp poles for me to actually want to do that with the flying piano. So, after all, we're bound to hit some of them. The rockets all feel pretty, pretty similar, so there, there isn't really much to say about them. But basically, what rockets you pick is going to end up being a matter of taste, and how many rockets, and what type of rockets you want to fire. But yeah, let, let's try the really rough one. I'm probably going to crash this one. But there, there seems to be a small, tiny road just up, a, just up ahead here. And we should be able to do this. Should. Th this is my hubris, ladies and gentlemen. This is my hubris, thinking I can actually do this. Most likely we're just gonna crash. Well, we haven't actually crashed yet. In fact, this is a fairly decent grass strip landing. I mean... We already had damaged. We already had damaged gear, and <laughs> this is ridiculous. I don't know if if the damage model is make is not really done yet, or if this is actually just a test of skill. But obviously, we missed the runway by a lot. So uh, I'm basically just going to pick a new slot. We are going to scroll to. Colt 2-2, and we're gonna load up with gun pods and bombs, and then we are going to take this aircraft for a attack mission. So we're gonna load her up with, let's see here, we have M3 pods, D4 pods, oh, luggage container, nice. So we're going to give, uh, actually, let's go with the D4 ones. Ooh, that's actually re really nice, concrete Bus, uh, concrete piercing bombs. What do we have more? We have the Belugas and standard snake guys. If we got the Durandal, of course we're gonna load the Durandal. So uh, we're actually above our target weight there. So we might actually skip the. Yeah, we're gonna skip the Durandal. But it seems like th that's actually a tricky thing to do because. Uh, no. Uh, basically, you have to remove the payload first, and then you can remove the pylon. So that's how you do it. And we are now we are now good on the wait. Well, they said that they I got the toggle that they, it was copy, but I'm not sure if they actually got it or not. So we are gonna yeah, they got it. Oh, I've missed these. These are the least aerodynamic gun pods you will ever find. And they are basically putting 30 caliber guns on the plane. So, I think they're 30 caliber at least. They're not really fun to work with aerodynamically. But if I'm going to have... 
have something in the campaign that's gonna use them, then it's gonna be basically... Yeah, welcome to hell, lad. You're gonna hunt hinds with these things strapped to your airplane. Check brakes. Flaps down. Uh, dimmed the windshield. Let's see what which way we are. Yeah, we're gonna take left here. Turn left, just like in the Doctor Who episode. Uh, nose wheel steering is on. Why is that yellow button saying Canopy Severance just screaming at me? Push it, push it, you gotta see what it does. Yeah, I can figure out what it does, and I don't want to try it. Let's see here, Master Arm, off, sequence, no, and here we have Bomb, Gun, Gun. So, basically, you will be able to see what you have on a pylon at any given time. I mean, out of the out of the counterinsurgency aircraft, it doesn't really matter that the 339 is uh, not gonna be the ones packing heat seekers, though I really wish it would. Uh, Rover is going to be one of the more more easier ones to operate. I mean, you don't you only need to know how to fly it, and you need to know the weapons panel. And that's about it. You can probably be combat effective with this airplane in fairly short order if you know the basics of flight otherwise. Which is actually pretty in in interesting. I usually taught the Vegan for being beginner friendly, but the MB339 is going to probably be even more so. And that's a, that's a good thing, because if people feel like the 339 is a valid thing to fly, then we might actually see... I mean, India uh, India Fox Echo, I think that's what they're called. I, I usually get the order messed up. Uh, they're gonna release one of my favorite underdog planes of all time, the Gina. The G91 Gina. Basically... A small attack plane that never got its due. It won a competition for being a good aircraft, but it was basically too little too late. It got into an era of jet aviation where it wasn't really that appreciated. And it has basically a cult following because I don't really know why, but I loved it ever since I built it as a model kit. And I'm just gonna say, if this if this is the standard that they put on the 339, then the Gina, it just fills me with hope. It fills me with hope that they are gonna do that one justice. Not that I doubted it anyway, because I've already seen how they would treat this aircraft as a free mod. But uh, I'm kind of hoping for... To, uh, I'm, I'm eager to see more of it. So, now we're gonna take her off the runway, and we need... One thing this airplane has a lot in common with the Mirage F1, which is why they would actually work pretty decent together in a campaign. Not that I'm gonna do it. I've already explained that I basically want the Mirage F1 to be a um, campaign to be a uh, tribute to Argies. And it is that when you pull up from the runway, you need to watch your ass. Because I've, if you pull too hard, the ass is going to just go straight into the runway. And that is not something you want. So, Batumi has some ships in the harbor, if I recall correctly. Yeah, we have ships in the harbor. We have the Piotr Vilk. We have 
we, but we also have a couple of stingers there. So, with this thing not having any flares whatsoever, it becomes our solemn duty to make a low approach onto Batumi, get our bombs onto the airfield, uh, because I just realized that my b my load right now are runway piercing bombs, so obviously we should go for Batumi. Uh, Batumi is also pre Batumi is not actually defended, and uh, Sukumi has airplanes, but is also not defended. So let's see how we can do with a low flying attack against Batumi. There's at least some stingers and stuff like that close to Batumi that should keep me honest about this. But we don't actually need the gun pods, so we can actually try a short burst of the gun pods right here. Master arm. Oh, you, you can you can feel that recoil. Notice how every time I push the trigger, the nose goes down. That's recoil affecting the plane. That that's 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 nice. However, you will be hard pressed to actually feel like this plane is flying as uh, fast as you could see in the trailer because this is not a fast aircraft. This is uh, this is a pretty slow aircraft by default. So we are going to switch that off and we are going to turn our attention to the site. Now as you can see here, you have the power, you have the brightness, and you have the depression. And I seem to have forgotten how to fix the depression. There is a joke somewhere around that, uh, around there that I don't want to make. Ah, there we go. So we're going to depress it 800, and then we are actually we're going to depress it even more. Uh, so basically you can find fine tune tune these dials and we need to actually trim this plane out of it uh, but it appears it's off the mark like if you want to adjust this one then you adjust it to the left of it so we are we have it 900 we are going to go in close over Batumi airfield uh, I think we're actually closing in, but no, we are not closing in at all. It's Cobaletti we have up front, so... A little more low flying to get where we need to be. And I think we're gonna switch, we're gonna switch off Master Arm, we're gonna turn on our bombs, and we're gonna make sure that we have nose and tail fuses on them. I haven't actually used these kind of bombs, but I'm fairly certain they are the kind that will basically burrow themselves into concrete. And that could be an interesting experience. So, for us the crosshair will most likely be more of a guiding tool rather than an actual, uh, an actual aiming device. We'll just need to make sure that the crosshair stays on the runway that we are attacking. I, I wonder why the flaps are... Oh, flaps are... There we go. I had forgotten to properly... Oh, let's, let's do something stupid. Let's do something stupid. Well, at least we survived doing that stupid thing. It, I would have looked like an ass if I didn't pull that one off. And uh, it would have been really, really annoying to have to just go back and get a new plane. I should have done that on the way out, but it was just too tempting. And I felt like if if I can do it in the Vegan, then I can do it in this plane that I bought like one hour ago. Yeah, the arrogance is going to be the end of me. If there's one thing that DCS really, really likes to punish, it's arrogance. Top Gun may like arrogance in a fighter pilot. Spoiler alert, they actually do not. The movie lied. 
but uh, DCS will absolutely punish you for it. You think you're good? You didn't follow procedure? You eyeballed it? Sure, then DCS is gonna punish you. <laughs> Not that this plane seems very keen on punishing me. So far, it has only punished me for things I've actually deserved, and that would be the landing gear. And in all honesty, the landing gear only became an issue once I insisted on taking off again. Had I decided that it was enough was enough, Yeah, sorry. You, you you want me to zoom out the cockpit? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, I haven't really been keeping score on the chat messages. Actually, SSG, I think this thing might actually be slower than the hind. At some point, we simply have to put that one to the test. We put the we put the hind and the MB339 on a race, and then we'll see who gets there first. And my money is not necessarily on the free fri uh, free free nine. She's a very forgiving airplane to fly, as long as you keep your... As long as you constantly trim her, you can... It's basically hands-off. You don't need to... Do much at all in regards to keeping her honest. Like, she's not... It's not a plane that will struggle with you. Um, but you do need to keep be aware of your flaps, and I am not. You need to be aware of uh, how much drag your wing is uh, will produce, and these gun pods in particular are really nice in that regard. And uh, you'll also need to be aware of your trimming. But aside from that, she's a very forgiving airplane to fly. So we're going to adjust a little bit more and. Basically, now I'm trying to take her into... So, visibility from the cockpit is pretty damn good, I would say. Uh, you could use this plane as a recce bird. Like, you could, you could spot with it. No problem. So, this, like I said, visibility to all sides but downwards is not going to be a, be a problem. So we have Batumi City here. We are going to go into... Uh, we're going to make sure that the buildings mask our approach to the airfield. Master Arm on. I have no idea what the bombs I am about to drop will do, or even what the correct procedures for them is gonna be. So, this is gonna be interesting. I can only assume that since they are essentially rocket-powered Durandal copies, or something like that, they will be burrowing themselves into the concrete and then detonate in the runway. Uh, we should probably fly a bit lower so we don't get snagged by a stinger. Sound is good, but basically nothing more than I actually anticipate. So, oh, we're not we're not even we're not even close to the actual harbor yet, let alone the airfield. Damn, this thing is slow. I need to take that uh, into account when I make the campaign for it. That it's uh, gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of long, just slogs flying this thing. It seems to have a G GPS as well, but uh, doesn't seem to be any 
any actual visual data tied to it. At least not what I can see. This is also one of those birds that would actually benefit from having an interaction with one of the civilian GPSs. My biggest pet peeve with one of those is actually that, um, at least in the free in the L thirty nine, using that one meant that you had to basically remove your gun sight. And I would actually like to have the GPS module interaction for these for because then it looks a little more ad hoc. It looks like yeah there are some people who just bought a civilian aviation GPS and now they're gonna use it for some cl for some clandestine dirty warfare in the desert. There's a harbor right there, there's the ships and I'm not really doing a terrific job of terrain masking myself here. I'm basically just low flying. I should try and try and get in back behind those hills. Of course, I only know that there are stingers there, but I made this mission like six months ago. So I'm not actually convinced that those stingers are going to fire. Most likely they are, and uh, thinking that they would not is going to give myself a really bad day. So once we have visual on the airfield, we're gonna start our turn onto the target. But yeah, the, the stuff like this is what I feel is, if you're gonna fly combat missions in the 339, Basically doing this, uh, going in low and attacking lightly armed, uh, lightly defended targets is most likely going to be, there's the airstrip, uh, going to be what you what you can do in it. And th that's not a bad thing. Like, I really enjoy the back to basics kind of DCS aviation warfare, where it's basically unguided bombs, rockets, and guns, and the stakes aren't really that high, basically nobody is watching, it's not a big Russian invasion of Georgia or something like that. Uh, we'll have to be careful, there are across the river at least more stingers. We're lined up pretty decently, but we're gonna be a hot mess over the water. Pickle. So they have parachutes. Yeah, so basically those bombs were just dropped. They're parachutes. And they have parachutes and once they cling from the parachutes, they will essentially just go straight down into the ground. Now, we can probably guess that I'm gonna eat the stinger any time now. So we can switch to the gun pods and see it, how our aim is against actual hardened targets. Now these targets are buildings, so I'm actually eager to see. Of course our point of aim is going to be terrible because not only do we have to contend with that, that recoil, we also have a... Uh, we also need to re basically reset our gun sights. But I feel we got enough rounds on target that if there was actual actual enemy infantry inside those buildings, then that would have been a problem for said infantry. In fact, we, we even got it to start smoking, so... Let's see if we can increase the smoke hazard in one of the targets next to it. Oh, and I'm still... Yeah, that's... And we're out of ammo. So that's it for the gun pods. Let's see if we can eject those. Select... Sub it. No, the gun pods are uh, immune to be ejected. 
So, I do happen to know that there is actually a, a few trucks and other things on the what we in my squadron call the Batumi Cross uh, that can be used for rearm and refuel. So, let's see if we can actually put this bird down on Batumi Cross and reload her. Most likely we can. Uh, I'm not sure, but th I think this aircraft can actually stop on such a short notice. We need to be careful about the harbor though. Uh, there's still going to be stingers and ships around the harbor, but like I said, I only place them out. I don't actually know if the stingers are going to be annoyed at me or not. But that could, uh, that could be a really interesting exercise. See if we can do a bit of dive bombing. But yeah, we should make sure to trim her out so we don't just go straight into the water. There we go. I think we're good. Yeah, we need to make sure that... I think we're losing engine pressure. Did we lose... Did we lose fuel or something? I don't think that's a fuel issue. It can't be. But I, f I feel like we're losing uh, engine pressure. Yeah, we are definitely losing engine pressure. And here's the problem. I haven't actually learned the engine relights procedure. And we don't really have all that much time to learn it. So, pfft. Fail flight indeed. We, ha we didn't really get to do any of that landing and I basically have to return to basics and see what I can do about the engine relight. But I thank you for staying with me while I was doing this fail flight. If I was gonna say something about this bird it would be probably be that I'm not really that sure about the asking price. The asking price is pretty steep. It's 60 euros and uh, I would have preferred it to be more like 50 uh, because while the module is great and I do like it I feel like putting it on the same price level as the F-16 and the F-18 and the Jeff is most likely gonna hurt it in the long run so I'm a bit conflicted there, but in the end of the day, at the end of the day, I think that we are going to see. Uh, we're we're probably gonna see uh, more use of this airplane, and I for sure am really going to look forward to using this airplane in a future campaign. I'm not actually sure at this point if I will be pushing the MB339 campaign ahead of the F1 campaign, but it's certainly possible, uh, because I can feel like the MB339 is going to be less complicated. Of course, if I don't, I'm not mistaken, the MB339 already comes with a campaign, and if so, I'm, mo I'm more likely to give that one a playthrough. So, like I said, thank you for hanging with me this past hour been a really fun and uh, well I'll see you next time which won't be on Sunday because on Sunday we will not be flying due to scheduling conflicts rather it will probably be next Sunday take care 
and have a great night.